Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elliot, a junior doctor in the UK that's specialising in psychiatry. On my channel we do educational videos about everything to do with mental health, drugs, and that includes things like reaction videos to stuff on TV and in the media. And today we're checking out an episode of one of my favourite shows. It's always sunny in Philadelphia and this one is called Psycho Pete Returns. Good luck everyone. What's this? Great song and great news? Yeah, and it's all tied in with the song, so it makes sense. <laughs> What's the news? Psycho P! Psycho P's back in town! One of the reasons I love this show is that no matter how offensive their language is, it's actually always their ridiculous ignorance that's the butt of the joke. A bit like Alan Partridge. Um, the automatic association of, of, of psychiatric illness and violence has been there for um, oh God knows how long and it's still there that stigmatises mental illness to a huge degree. It leads to a huge amount of fear of people with mental illness that then means those with it end up being quite isolated and segregated from society and you end up in a vicious circle that we still are trying to, to break. The hospital said he's fine, so he's fine. The man did the time. No, 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 no. I live with these maniacs in the loony bin. There is no cure in those psycho bastards. It's actually really sad, but once your brain's a piece of shit, it's always a piece of shit. There is no way we're having that psychotic mutant anywhere near our bar. That's all there is to it. Jeez. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so mental illness isn't something that gets cured. Pretty much every mental illness is chronic to some degree, which can relapse and then remit. But that's just like most health problems that are out there. That makes it no difference to asthma, to diabetes, to COPD, to heart failure. Um, it's something that people are managing to some degree for the rest of their life, but it's certainly not something that has to define that person and their life. Pete, is Wait, that you? Psycho Pete. Here, Ralph. Oh, dude, you look gnarly. I did not recognize you, man. <laughs> What'd you do? Did you like yank it out and let fit a rage? That's pretty psycho. No, it's just genetics. Oh, genetics! Oh, psycho! <laughs> what are they feeding you, yeah. bro? I mean, you look huge. Know, look at that mess. Like it's five pounds. Yeah, I was struggling with my weight for a while now. Yeah, meds don't help. Weight gain is a really common problem for those people with mental health conditions. So, illnesses like depression can sap you of a huge amount of motivation and energy to do things like exercise. Um, and then when we think about a lot of medications, they do end up leading to things like weight gain, particularly the atypical or second generation antipsychotics and some antidepressants like metazapine can as well. There's a lot of research going on to try and understand the mechanism behind why this happens with these drugs and the emergence of some newer antipsychotics that don't have this effect. Examples would include things like aripiprazole and lorazepam. The main problem with people going to these state-run loony bins is the separation between church and state. Explain. Well, you spend most of your time talking to a therapist instead of a priest. You know, a priest is going to let you off the hook for all the things that you've done. You heard Pete. He feels guilty. Yeah. He needs to be absolved so that he can go psycho again. Okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess I see that. Look, dude, I feel guilty all the time for my thoughts and urges, you know, but I'm not going to talk to a therapist who's going to make me, you know, deal with it and confront those issues. I talk to a priest, he lets me off the hook, I move on. We humans love to avoid emotions. We're rubbish at knowing how we feel and actually we're rubbish at, at dealing with emotions in general. Some people are more rubbish than others, but generally as a species, we're not very good at it. Um, Emotions make us feel vulnerable, and feeling vulnerable is scary, so we want to run away from the thing that we're scared of, bury those emotions and just try and move past it. Avoidance rarely works as a way of managing emotions, they always tend to come out in some way, shape or form, and actually it's the basis for techniques like cognitive behaviour therapy or CBT, and to a large extent mindfulness. So CBT tries to look at the thoughts that you have and how they're connected to the way that you feel and the emotional side, and actually how you behave as a consequence of those thoughts and those feelings. A lot of the time our behaviours are not always actually very helpful and constructive at dealing with the underlying emotion. Um, and once you're more aware of that, you can try and develop a bit of better awareness about those thoughts and those feelings and some more helpful coping mechanisms. Mindfulness is not about positive thinking, it's more about an awareness of how you're feeling in the moment. All up, these techniques are trying to help you 
identify your emotions a bit better and deal with them a little bit better. It's not about taking the feelings away, it's about learning to sit with them and manage them better. Nineteen fifty five was a time that the lobotomy was still around. It was also a time where electroconvulsive therapy or ECT maybe wasn't always being used in the most ethical way compared to how it's used today. And it's also around about the time that our very first antidepressants and antipsychotics were starting to be discovered. So people ended up in hospital for years and years just as a way of segregating people more than anything um, compared to now when we have a huge amount of medications and types of psychological therapies at our disposal that means people generally when they come into hospital it's for a matter of days to weeks, um, not years. I'm not sure I understand what's happening. I'm schizophrenic. D, mm. I swear you would be of more use to me if I skinned you and turned your skin into a lampshade or fashioned you into a piece of high-end luggage. I can even add you to my collection. Are you saying that you have a collection of skin luggage? Of course I'm not, D. Don't be ridiculous. Think of the smell. You haven't thought of the smell, you bitch! Now you say another word and I swear to God I will dice you into a million little pieces and put those pieces in a box a glass box that I will display on my mantle. All right, now that that's settled, we can have a normal conversation. Now, doctor, I'm here to talk to you about a man, a very dangerous and a very unstable man. Oh, the irony. <laughs> Dennis has so many narcissistic and antisocial personality traits, but with a certain amount of charisma and charm in a way that makes it maybe akin to what we would now call psychopathy. Um, who's the real psychopath in this episode? How the hell did you get drugs for Pete? Well, I had a simple conversation with a reasonable man and that man wrote me a prescription. Mm, yeah, he got the drugs by being a real life actual psychopath. <laughs> she keeps, uh, no, ridiculous, okay? No, the man asked me a few questions. Uh -huh. I answered those questions as honestly as I could. Right. Next thing I know, I'm walking out the door with meds for borderline personality disorder. Yep. You see, that's how you get shit done. Dude. No, no, that's how you get diagnosed. There's nothing on this to suggest that Dennis actually has borderline personality disorder. Even if he did, the evidence-based treatments for borderline personality disorder, sometimes especially in the UK known as emotionally unstable personality disorder, but the core features is psychological therapies, things like dialectical behavioural therapy, difficult to access, but it's what's got the evidence. Wait a second, then why'd you get sent to a mental institution? Social anxiety disorder mixed with depression. I was really more of a danger to myself. I was always talking about committing suicide. Anxiety and depression are really commonly seen together um, and that last bit highlighted where actually the majority of risk is in psychiatry and that is the risk that the person usually poses to themselves as a result of, of the thoughts and the feelings that they have. I do love this show but safe to say that wasn't necessarily the most accurate representation of what psychiatric care is. Um, I'll take it for what it is. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and let me know if there's any other sort of depictions of mental health or psychiatric care on TV or in film that you thought I should go through on the channel. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. My name is Elliot and I will see you very soon for the next video.